Oh, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's a good day behind the scenes video. I'll stick you so you might hate. Assalamu alaikum, dear viewers. When we do functions, we usually need domains and range. And today I'll show you what those are and in what mathematical way we can write them. Let's get started. Okay, so now I'll show you the domain first. Let's say in one example we have that the function of x okay, is equals to 2 divided by the x. Now let's try a few examples in order to find what we should do. Let's say that this is my function box, okay? And I'm inputting something. I have to put inputting x. Let's say if I put 3, then my output would be 2 over 3. That makes sense. So let me give one more input. If I put 4 into my function box, my function is uh, 2 over x, and my x is 4. So it would come out 2 over 4. So which I basically half. Now, if I try to put 0 in as an input into my function box, we'd have to do 2 over 0. Now, 0 divided by something is 0. We can do that. But 2 divided by 0, it's undefined. We can't do that. Which is why we will write down that everything except for 0. All real values of x except for 0. So let's erase this and then I'll show you how to write it, how to write it in the mathematical way with all the domains. Okay. So here, let's write that we put to this bracket and we write that x. Okay. X is epsilon. X epsilon. Epsilon is a Greek uh, letter and it actually represents that x is a member of. Okay, so we can say x is a member of real numbers and this line right here this straight line is actually such that so let's say it in a, a sentence x is a member of all the of the real numbers such that now we said that our x can be everything not but not equals to zero can be zero but it can be any other real number and we'll close this is the end of our statement so this is how we would write uh, this function. So x is a member of real numbers such that x is not equals to zero, but x is a member of x. Uh, x can be anything else. Okay. So now I'm going to show you another example with this uh, domain, and then we'll go on into our range. Both are actually really fun in my opinion. Okay. Anyway, um, the function of x again. We'll, we're going to do x. The function of x is equals to the square root of x minus 6. Now, let's give in some inputs into our function box to get some outputs. Because the outputs matter. Well, if I try, let's say, 1. Okay, if I try 1, then uh, it would, if I give in 1 as my x, then it would be the square root of 1 minus 6, which is actually minus 5. And as we know, we can't do the square root of the any, any negative number. It'll come out as an unreal number. So which is why we cannot do this. Now, if I give a 0, if I give a 6, number 6 is my input into my function box, then I'm getting 6 minus 6, which is 0. And you can do the square root of 0. That's 0. So that means you can do 6. If I tried with 2, 2 minus 6 is minus 4. And as I said, you can do with negative numbers. So we just found out that our f of x, our function of x, our, our, our x, actually, sorry, our x should be greater than or equals to 6. It can be 6. But has to be greater than 6. It can be 7. Yes, it can be 8. Yes, has to be greater than 6. Okay, so let's write that down into our um, a mathematical way. And we're going to use the epsilon. Yes. So my x, my x is a member of epsilon. That's how you write an epsilon. My x 
is a member of all the real numbers. The real numbers, you put two of those lines and then you just made an R. Okay, so X is a member of real numbers such that our X should be greater than or equals to 6. Statement closed. This is how we would write the domain of that. And now I'm going to show you some examples of the range. So now I'll show you an example of the range. Okay, so now let's do the range. Let's say that my function, my function of x should be x squared. So if I give in 2, 4, the output will come to it. Uh, it's like that. Now I'm, I'm, I'm gonna represent this on a graph. I'm gonna draw a very simple, simple graph right here. I know that this is zero, right? So now if I give in one, if my input x as one, one squared is one. So that will be one and that will be one right there. So my point would be right there. Now if I give in two, that's two, then that would be four, somewhere like that, like that. If I give in three, that would be nine. So probably way higher. Nine, like there, right? And if I give in four, that would be 16. So let's say I give four right here. No, no, sorry. If I give four right here, then that would be 16 all the way up there, right? So then if I join these, they actually come like this. So it's greater than zero if I give the positive numbers. Now let's try with negative to make sure. So negative one and that the, uh, that square root that that uh sorry that the minus one times minus one would it be positive one because minus times minus is plus one times one is one. So that would actually be positive one. So here if I give minus one, it will be one right there. So this would be, and then if I give minus two. That minus 2 would be right here, that would be 4, so right there. So it's actually going to turn out the same way, like that same curve. It looks like we did right there. So that would be the graph of a function of x is equal to x is squared. Now let's write the range. Now when we are writing the range, as we figure it out, then it will be that f of x, the function of x, we won't write x right here. In the range, we don't use an x. The domain may use an x. The, uh, the range we use f of x, so basically this right here. Okay, so um, we all know that we have figured out that f of x should be greater than or equals to or equals to zero. Now it should be equals to here, but if you come across any problem where it's not equals to, then if you have to draw a graph, then just don't fill in that space. Just go like that. Put a hole in that. Okay. So, anyways, let's come back to the come back to the problem here it would be f of x okay my f of x epsilon is a member of real numbers such that my f of x right here as you can see my f of x should be greater than or equals to should be greater than or equals to zero and sentence closed so this is how we would write a range. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and I hope you all understood that the domain versus the range and how we can write those with the real numbers and the epsilons and the, uh, for the, the brackets and the such that and of this graph. And I hope you all understood these. Thank you and assalamu alaikum.